is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Aurafil, Aurafil Italian thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Havel Sewing, when you need to cut it close, choose Havels. Moda, make something quilty with Moda Fabrics. Hey everybody, welcome to Quilty. I'm Mary Fonz, and we're very happy that you're joining us today. We being the crew that's all right there. You can't see them, but they're all like right there. Uh, today is a bit of a conversation. Uh, we got a wonderful, wonderful blog comment from a one Miss Bethany. And I'd like to read you what Bethany wrote and why it struck fear in my heart. Okay. Hi, I'm a 100% Quilty taught quilter. It has literally changed my life. It totally gave me the courage to take my sewing machine out of the box and start sewing, thanks to your Threading the Sewing Machine show and Sawtooth Star tutorial. A few months and about five quilt tops later, yay, I'm never looking back. I know I will keep doing this forever. I love more, I'd love more sewing time with Mary. I love the Blocks of Go-Go episodes. I'd also love it if you could tackle the basting and quilting side of things. We are, Bethany, we've got tons of shows on that and more in the magazine too. Um, I've had to look on blogs and things for direction on that, so I'd love more of that. I know I'll, I'll never be able to afford a long arm quilter, okay? Uh, I'm already dreaming of my next sewing machine. Thank you so much, Quilty Mary. Okay. Awesome, that is amazing. But when I read that, I'm 100% Quilty Talk Quilter, I was like, Bethany, but there's so much more to tell you. And there's so many things that we've never actually said, but we will, but oh my gosh, now's the time. Okay, so today's show is like six very, very basic sewing machine tips. Even, even these things are so fundamental to me that I'm not sure that I've ever, ever actually said them. So today's the day, okay? So I have my little notes here, we've got a few tips. Okay, the first thing that I wanna tell you is that when you're at your sewing machine, you never, and I mean never, Bethany, uh, move the uh, wheel, the, the hand wheel, away from you, okay? So you never crank it like that. You always, if you need to move your uh, lever up, and, or, up or down, you crank the wheel toward you. Okay, the reason that we do that is because when you crank the wheel away from you, it's like, um, will it be like, uh, I guess, screwing a screw in too tight? You, you can throw the timing off your machine, actually, if you do that. And so it would be like, I don't know, just wrenching something the wrong way, okay? Uh, winding your watch the wrong way too much might make the springs burst out like in a cartoon or something, you know? So always uh, move the wheel toward you, okay? So that's something that's really important. Also, um, always make sure, and these are kind of like always and never things. Some, a lot of times in patchwork, it's like there's a lot of ways to, to do things, but these are kind of like, these are important. This is just why I wanted to tell you, if you're 100% taught, I gotta I got cover this stuff. So when you are um, beginning to sew, when you're ready to sew, always make sure your presser foot is down, okay? If your presser foot is up and you press your pedal and you begin to go, you can really kind of hurt your machine there too. You can really get a lot of thread goobers. Um, it can, you can have tangles and things like that. The nice thing is on my baby lock and on many machines that are made today, it won't let you sew if your presser foot isn't down. Like if I my presser foot's up, it won't even let me. And there's a really nice little red button that's like, eh, I don't think so. So then when I put it down, better put some fabric in there. I put my presser foot down, the green light goes on and there I go. Don't do that. Never. Okay. Here's the other tip. It's seven tips. Don't sew like this. Okay. That's really bad. Look where you're going. <laughs> I've never said that on the show. This is important. Okay. See, I have my iPad because I have things to do. That was really fun though. I want to do it one more time. Okay. So, um, yes, the other thing here. So when you are, th when you thread your machine and I'm going to do it really quick because it's so fast. Um, one of the tips, I guess, I'm just thinking of all these things. Forget the number. What did I say? Six, seven, we're up to eight. I don't know. So when you when you pull your thread out of your machine, if you need to re-thread it, the rule is don't pull it back through this way because you'll you'll lint up your machine in the inside. So the rule is snip it off here and pull your thread out that way. Okay. I've heard that it doesn't really matter that much if you're using really good thread, but why not? Okay, so I'm gonna thread my machine. My little thread guide on my melody is so fabulous. Okay, I go through the numbers, thread by numbers, do my little thread guy. Okay, so we've threaded the machine. Now, the tip that I had planned on telling you is that you want, I'm gonna come around this way so the dudes can get a good shot. 
give yourself a tail, okay? Give yourself a tail on the top thread, okay? And kind of pull it back and up toward like 10 o'clock. And give yourself a bobbin tail too, okay? Up and back toward 10 o'clock. You just give yourself a little extra. So if you don't have any extra thread and you begin to sew, you know, if you begin to do something like this, um, you will come unthreaded probably, okay? So give yourself a tail. All right, we're almost there. But there's a few more things. I'm gonna make sure I get them. Oh yeah, sometimes you can buy at the store um, or you can find in a garage sale uh, pre-wound bobbins or like old bobbins or extra bobbins or something. Or you're like, well, I think these bobbins are from another machine. I can probably use them. Use with care because if you use a bobbin that's even a little bit like too small or a little bit too big, <clears throat> it can really, um, it can cause some damage to your machine. So just be careful with that. When in doubt, use the bobbins that came with your machine or just look at the diameter because they do say like 16 J or whatever it is. Okay, yes, the last two tips are change your needle every 16 hours of sewing. That's like the rough thing. So if you sew a lot, um, change your needle a lot. It helps you get a very accurate stitch, Bethany. And it also, um, I don't know, it's just, it, it's it's better. <laughs> it's better. It's better. It, it, the needle that's sharper, it's like sharpening your knife. Is a tomato easier to cut, or, cut with a sharp knife or a dull one? A sharp one. So it's the same with a needle. So change your needle um, and always turn off your machine before you do that. And the last thing to show you is a presser foot change. So if you want to do decorative stitches on your machine, now hopefully you would be looking at your manual before you do anything like that. If you want to do a blanket stitch, and this will happen to you. I mean, if you want to do a blanket stitch or a decorative stitch or any kind of, um, you know, stitch that is not just a straight line, chances are pretty good you're going to need to change your presser foot, okay? And that might seem, yeah, extremely obvious, but if you're a 100% quilty talk quilter and you've lost your manual, wah, it's up to me to tell you what to do. It's a lot of pressure. So if you wanted to do a zigzag stitch, just a very, very basic zigzag stitch, and I'm definitely going to look where I'm going on this, um, you know, you got to change your presser foot because, and if we can get a close up of this stitch, that would be amazing. Your needle, let me give it a little bit wider. Your needle needs to be able to move back and forth. Hold on, I'm going to do it even bigger. Okay, now we're in the business. Okay, I'm just going to get into this area here and show you this. Okay, so I'll put it right here. So I just did that little blanket stitch. Well, if I hadn't changed my presser foot, that that hole there, that's not big enough for that to go neat, 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 right? So the reason we use different presser feet is because we have different stitches on our machine and they help us do different things. So, you know, explore, go online, know about your machine, totally buy a machine from a dealer, preferably a baby lock dealer, and uh, really, they're great. And you can um, do have so much fun on your machine, but you need the right, the right tools, okay? So, Bethany, are we getting there? Oh, God. The last thing I want to say as I close is that um, some people find Quilty to be perfect for them, and they're like, yes, I love the show. It's so great. I'm learning everything I need. Some people, it will be too basic for them. Some people don't like watching shows on the internet, and they'd rather go to a class. Find your teachers ask around, go to class, go to classes, go to conventions, take workshops, schoolhouses, things like that. Always keep learning and never take anybody's word for it like at, as the very last word on anything, okay? We're really, really happy you love the show and so many people do. And it's our pleasure to teach you. So thanks for watching Quilty and uh, keep sending us fan mail because it makes us feel really good. Right guys? Right. <laughs> Bye. Quilty is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Arafil. Arafil Italian thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Havel Sewing, when you need to cut it close, choose Havels. Moda, make something quilty with Moda fabrics.